Hello and welcome to this video presentation on safeguarding as we lead into the beginning of the new season. Thanks for taking the time to, to avail of this. Uh, my name is Conor Fadgen. I work as the National Governance Officer for Bampton Ireland. And this video presentation is, is here to assist you as you start up within your club and to give you some fairly key key points of information as to how we, we proceed. So in terms of the topics we're going to cover here, we'll just look very briefly into the background of safeguarding. We'll look at the safeguarding structure within Bamington, Ireland and what's required as within our safeguarding children and young people policy. The safeguarding requirements as expected of our affiliated bodies, the role of the safeguarding officer, the role of the designated liaison person. We also look into the code of conduct, reporting procedures, safe recruitment of volunteers, vetting, safeguarding training, supervision, and finally, just where you can access the Badminton Ireland policies in relation to safeguard. So, a brief background into safeguarding would be, it's, it's in place essentially to promote uh, the well-being of children and to ensure that they're protected and it's also there to support and to develop. So there's really two aspects to safeguarding. One is very much the child protection element, but also then is the, the need to support and develop uh, children. So here looking at the Bampton Ireland safeguarding structure, along the right hand side you can see the structure in place for clubs in Northern Ireland and the framework there where you have your club safeguarding officer and you have then reporting into the designated liaison, the designated person, sorry, in Ulster, who is Beverly Ringland. For clubs in the Republic of Ireland, the structure is slightly different in line with the Sport Ireland recommendations of having a club safeguarding officer and a club DLP, having a county safeguarding officer for the counties due to juvenile teams, inter-county teams, and also then at branch level where you have your DLP to assist any county safeguarding officer and club safeguarding officer, club DLP, and further down the chain. At the top then you have myself as the mandated person, and also uh, David McGill then as our national designated liaison person. So in terms of the requirements for our affiliated bodies, it's important that you have a safeguarding officer appointed, that for clubs in the Republic of Ireland that you have completed your child risk assessment and your child safeguarding statement. Ensure that all your juvenile and adult members are affiliated. Ensuring that all people working with children and adults are vetted and are adequately trained that's your safeguarding training and your vetting, your access and I, and making sure that you're adopting Badminton Ireland policies. So the key piece really is the child risk assessment and safeguarding statement and ensuring that your all your boxes are ticked in terms of making sure that training has been available and availed of by any of those working with, with children and young people, that your child risk assessment and child safeguarding statement as a legally required document in the Republic of Ireland is completed and up to date and it is recommended that it is reviewed every 24 months, every two years. And, and, and essentially what you're doing with the child risk assessment and safeguarding statement is making sure that you're abiding by the Badminton Ireland policies. So they are all linked and in place and are robust and making sure that you are providing a very compliant and also a very safe and enjoyable environment for your children to, to play badminton in. So in terms of the role of the safeguarding officer, the qualifications as such, it's important that they are affiliated to Badminton Ireland, that they have gone through the necessary vetting, be it through either Garda vetting or through Access and I, making sure they have the minimum requirement for training in terms of safeguarding level one or the Safeguarding Children and Young People Workshop in Northern Ireland. So we would recommend that a safeguarding officer would complete level two and also in Northern Ireland do the designated safeguarding children officer training. 
and as well as that they must be on the club management committee and be reporting on any safeguarding issues and making a report uh, making a report available that it is uh, that safeguarding is covered in terms of compliancy within within the club so in terms of responsibilities it's overseeing the risk assessment and, and safeguarding statement process making sure that those working with children are vetted and have been through the safeguarding training and have a valid certificate in place for that and making sure that any recruitment or selection procedures that you have within your club for, for people working with children and young people that they have been followed the safeguarding officer really is a point of contact for for young people parents coaches and committees and they they should be they should be very informative uh, in terms of what to do if there was a concern of abuse and liaise with the designated liaison person on that particular issue. So in terms of in terms of the role of the designated liaison person, they are responsible for ensuring that reporting procedures are followed in the case of a child protection concern. It's important that they get in touch with myself as a mandated person in Badminton, Ireland and that they understand the need to consult and make sure that they're making the right decisions in terms of the next steps if they have any allegation or concern of child abuse. And it's important that a record is maintained of the action taken relating to that allegation or concern. So if no person is appointed to the role, the chair of the club assumes the role. In terms of the code of conduct, this is essentially the the method of making sure that uh, uh, there is no indiscretions or ill behaviour within your club and we recommend that any member signing up at the start of the season signs up to the Badminton Ireland Code of Conduct and that is what we measure good behaviour against so for parents and spectators as you can see in this it's making sure that we listen to the child be understanding encourage Keep her cool, be a role model. So what we're trying to do is make sure that children feel safe, that they're obviously experienced and fun in participating in sport, and again, that it's an enjoyable experience for them. So in terms of reporting with regards to an internal concern, you can see that over here on the left hand side is poor practice. So this would be in relation to the code of conduct. And on the right hand side here we have suspected child abuse. Okay, so so the person has observed this behavior within a badminton environment. So this is an internal concern where it's happening within the badminton club. The person passes on their concerns to the safeguarding officer within the affiliated body. The safeguarding officer will identify if the concern is poor practice or suspected child abuse. So in the case of poor practice, the safeguarding officer within the club can deal with the misconduct issue. If the club's op club officers feel unsure or unable to deal with the issue, they should seek advice from the BI mandated person. Again, in terms of most of the issues that Tom Ireland have, have taken into the office, uh, almost all cases are, are code of conduct issues. Okay, so. Uh, and we offer that support to clubs. It's not as if a safeguarding officer is left on their own. It's important that if they have any doubts at all regarding an issue in their club, that they can contact us and, and we'll be there to assist them. In terms of suspected child abuse, it's obviously a much more serious matter. So suspected child abuse, again, you're referring back to your grounds for concern, which we, we would cover in safeguarding level one or safeguarding children and young people training. You're informing your club BLP and contact should be made with the mandated person BI. And again, it's about con consulting with, with TUSA HSCT. Um, and in Northern Ireland, it would be a case of, of directly reporting that to Beverly Ringland, who's the Ulster designated person. And from there, then the statutory authorities will proceed with their investigation and conduct an assessment. And from there, an action plan be laid out in terms of the next steps to be taken. In terms of the key points regarding this procedure, look, 
in terms of standing down or imposing restrictions. That's again, that would be through the liaison with the with the statutory authorities. May have to take internal action regardless of the outcome of the external investigation. Confidentiality is important. So again, whilst whilst there are two persons involved, possibly a club safeguard and officer and a club DLP, it's important that in the best interest of the child that confidentiality is maintained. If the club DLP decides not to report to the statutory authorities, they must record the reason why and again inform the person who reported it to them and they can report it if they wish to. If any affiliated body is unsure of the necessary steps to be taken, uh, they should seek advice uh, from, from myself and get in touch and we can, we can work out how exactly uh, the next steps will be. So if a child or young person is in immediate danger, you should contact the Gardaí PSNI without delay. So in terms of an external concern, a safeguarding officer may have received information relating to a child or a young person being uh, abused outside of the badminton club, but it has been reported inside the badminton club. So again the procedure is the same it's in the best interest of the child that this uh, allegation or concern is passed on to the statutory authorities so again the safeguarding officer can consult with the club dlp establish grounds for concern and informally consult with statutory authorities mandated person bi can be informed and report is submitted to the statutory authorities and a formal referral can be made from there okay so again it's it's a case of seeking that advice and it whether it's happened inside the club or outside the club the fact that it's been reported to you it action needs to be taken on it so again it's confidentiality making sure in the best interest of the child especially that um that that, that confidentiality is maintained and making sure that it's been reported in good faith without malice and club if the club dlp decides not to report again they can record the reason why and in the case of um, in the case of a child being in immediate danger it is the guardi or the psni or statutory authorities in the first instance that are that are informed okay so if you were to contact the, the guardi or the psni it's also important that statutory authorities such as TUSA or the HSCT, HSCT are informed also. In terms of safe recruitment of volunteers in relation to vetting, um, vetting it's obviously it's a, it's a legal requirement that any person working with children or young people or adults at risk are vetted. It's also important that reference checks are done so if a person is coming into your club from outside that uh, you may ask them for if they have previously helped in a sports club um, and your vetting is really it's a part of it and it's just making sure that if they say but look in in my case i have my vetting completed with another club but the vetting could have been done maybe a year two years before that and they're coming new into your club it's always a good idea to maybe ask Ask the previous club, were they helping out in your club? Was everything okay? How did they get on? Was there any issues? And uh, and source the information from there. And also, you can ask them to be revetted again. The vetting is valid for up to three years. But at the same time, the vetting is really only as good as the day that the vetting was conducted on. So, if if there is a period of a year or two years, then asking them to be vetted on entering into your club is a really responsible way of looking at making sure your children are safe in terms of roles and responsibilities obviously it's important that volunteers are advised as to what actually their roles are and giving them some guidance advice mentorship in terms of how to carry out their role successfully and if they are to decide to leave it's always a good idea to have an exit interview or just an informal chat really if they are leaving well, how did you find the experience was there any issues and we'd be hoping that great if there is no issues but if 
they they did have some issue that they'd be able to highlight exactly what it was and that might be addressed for for future future use so in terms of it and what is it it's it's exactly what it says on the tin it is a check um, and i suppose it does say here guard of it however the access and eye check in northern ireland is also uh, it also is is uh, applicable to our safeguarding children and young people policy and this is the actual guard of vetting process that we have outlined here Emma and Nesbitt in Ulster Bampton looks after the access and I and so if you do have any issues or questions regarding access and I please get in touch with Emma so you can see the process there and the person applying for relevant position needs vetting clearance and and there's different steps to take obviously the, the vetting ID form needs to be completed uh, and the supporting documents need to be sent in to us as well okay and from there and um, the information is inputted into the vetting system and then the invitation comes out then to complete the online form which is your previous addresses and just verification of information so from there then we, we will get an outcome from the national vetting bureau and that information then is just sent out to the individual so it's it's really just a check on any previous convictions or any pending convictions that may be on your record who is responsible for guard eventing so we were responsible for for inputting the information and for processing it and the national vetting bureau then come back with their appointment and all those who take on roles working with children young people and adults at risk they need to be guard eventing and you need to be guard vetted before you, you begin your position and your vetting is due for renewal every three years as per Bampton Ireland's vetting policy and that is it in terms of vetting so if you do have any questions on please please get in touch and um, you can see obviously this vetting process uh, is available on on the website why comply with vetting obviously look it is a legal requirement there is a guard of compliance unit has been established and um, for uh, for vetting in, in the republic of ireland and a failure to comply can result in a fine of up to ten thousand euro or five years in prison so it's in your best interest to make sure that anyone working within your club is vetted and that it's up to date and and that is essentially it in terms of vetting now in relation to safeguarding training obviously we have uh, various different trainings here that are available at the moment we have we are looking to run safeguarding level one training online and uh, sport ireland have made this uh, available to us so throughout october we are hoping to run some safeguarding level one safeguarding level one trainings and so this is these are essentially child protection sport awareness workshops and they are the minimum requirement as I stated earlier for our safeguarding officers we would recommend that safeguarding officers would also do safeguarding level two which is the club children's officer workshop and a dlp should have safeguarding level one and safeguarding level three these trainings are um, they're vastly available through the local sport partnerships as well in the republic of ireland so if you feel there is um there is a need within your club bampton ireland is now in a position where we can look to deliver more safeguarding level one workshops so please get in touch if you feel you have adequate numbers we're recommending uh, 12 12 per workshop at the moment so um, if you need any assistance with safeguarding training please get in touch get in touch with us in terms of Northern Ireland, there is the safeguarding children and young people in sport, and that is the minimum requirement for safeguarding officers in Northern Ireland. And also, then we recommend to do the designated safeguarding children officer training, which is a training that isn't actually ran that often, and so it, it is very useful if you make contact with Ulster Bampton, they may be able to assist you in getting this training up and running as well. The training is valid for three years. And once you are coming towards the end of the three years, I would advise you to complete the online refresher course, which is available through Sport Ireland and Sport NI. And 
once you complete the online refresher course, you will then be produced with another certificate, which if you send in to us, that then will keep you, your training validated for a further three years. So you shouldn't really have to sit a workshop for uh, almost a six year period. So um, it's worthwhile doing the online refresher course on an annual basis, simply to keep yourself up to date. It's, it's quite a worthwhile training. So on to supervision. So in terms of ratios, we recommend that there is one coach to eight players for children under the age of 12, and one coach to 10 players for players over the age of 12. Now, in terms of overall adult supervision, what that means is that you still need to have two adults present. There should never be an adult left on their own. Um, and that's not just to safeguard children, but that's also to safeguard the adults that are responsible for those children during that session. We would also advise that for mixed groups that you would have a male and a female, obviously for uh, for ease of comfort and and being being able to cover um, both sides of your group. And as well as that, it's just making sure that there's necessary checks in relation to venting safeguarding training etc that's what your club really needs to be focusing in on and making sure that everything is in place and that everyone is really abiding by the code of conduct um, if, if your coaches and players are abiding by the code of conduct you're generally in a fairly safe area and your environment is pretty good so just in terms of our safeguarding policies or any further information that you may require or need Please check out the governance section of the Badminton Ireland website, and you'll see there we have a number of a number of policies in place. So if there is something in particular that you, you need help with, you can check there. We also have a number of governance resources available as well in relation to safeguarding. So there's a number of short videos in terms of vetting and the child risk assessment, child safeguarding statement. So if you do need further information, there's some short videos there that we, we did last season. Thanks very much for your time and for watching. And I hope it's, you found it very useful. And if you have any further questions or queries reg regarding safeguarding of children and young people, please drop me an email there on my email address safeguarding at badmintonireland.com. Bye.